happy Sabbath. Welcome to Ignite. We are ignited and we just came to praise the Lord. We hope that you at home is doing the same. Amen. Amen. Anybody knows that God is good? Anybody knows that God is good? Can we bless Him? Can we praise Him? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sing, Lord, you are good today.
bless you. God, we give you glory. And God, we give you honor. And so we just want you to receive our worship. God, it's all we have to give. Receive our worship. You, Lord, are worthy. And no one, nothing can worship you. One voice we say, You Lord, you are worthy. And no one can worship this, no one can worship you for me. Right there, you want to just lift your hands and say, For all the things, God, for all the things you've done for me.
my worship, all of my worship. Father, receive my worship, all of my worship. One last time, give my worship. Wow. And just like that, we're here. <laughs> we made it through, what, 2020? I don't even know if we should call it 2020. We should give it a different name. But we made it through 2020 and we are here. You know, it's such a, such a pleasure to be here with you guys. And, you know, maybe not in person, but in spirit. It was truly my, my goal to be home at this time, be able to speak to you guys, to be there in person, you know, and to be able to connect with you and feel that energy because the Bahamian energy is different. It's different. It's like no other. And, hmm, man, I miss it. And I'm getting upset even just thinking about it, you know? But at the end of the day, we should praise God that we're all alive. We should praise God that we are here today that you have been given the ability to sit where you're sitting or stand where you're standing and be next to the person that you are next to. And I'm just grateful that I'm alive. I'm just grateful that I'm alive. For those of you that don't know me, uh, my name is Lorenzo. You don't need to call me Pastor Roll. You don't need to call me Mr. Roll. You can just call me Lorenzo. Okay, I grew up in Nassau, Bahamas, Pinewood Gardens, Chicago Street to be exact. <laughs> uh, went to Hillview, Hillview Seventh Day Adventist Church, boy. That was the days before the conference was even down at the bottom of the hill. Let me don't date myself. Let me don't date myself. That's before it was Tony Williams Darling Highway, though. It was just Harold Road back in those days. And those were the days where myself and PJ them and Janae them, like we would we would go to choir practice a lot of the times, just to have fun. It wasn't really all about volleyball and stuff right away, but we would I'd get a skateboard and just just go on the on the hill and someone would stand to the bottom of the hill, right? And they'd, they'd tell us if a car was coming and you just sit on the skateboard and you just just go. Right? The bottom of your shoes used to be done after that though, because that's the only way you could have stopped. But but those were the days, man. Those were the days we used to roll down that little hill there on the grass and go home itchy afterwards, but it was all worth it. It was all worth it. You know, and every time I think about Hillview, I think about Pathfinders. I haven't been a Pathfinders since I left home, but man, that's when they were Hilda used to run the show then. I, I know if you're from Johnson Park or, you know, Englishton or, you know, I know Marinata. Like, I know what church you're from. <laughs> but I don't care what nobody say. Hilda used to run the show. I don't know if you're running it now. You know, I don't know what's going on now. I don't know who there. Um, I don't know who you're not tying. You know, champion is now. It was me. Right? Just trying to, I'm trying to brag. Just letting you all know the facts, you know. I don't know who your drill squad is, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, but Johnson Park used to be a lot of competition back then, and they might still be now. I don't know, you know, maybe it might be New Providence now. I don't know. I just know from whence I came, right? So, with that said, you know, I don't want to waste no more of your time, because we could, we could sit here all night, and we could talk about that, and we could, we could go on and on and on, but... That's not why we're here. You know, first off, let me thank God. Let me thank God for giving me the voice. Let me thank God for giving me a peace of mind. 
you know and as you get older you it's funny it's funny when you hear your parents and your grandparents talk about this peace that passeth all understanding when you get to that point it's different okay when you when you when you when you watch this the, the pastor go up time after time after time again and you hear them speak from the word when you find out who God is for yourself after that it hits it hits different And although we're here today to talk about situationships, relationships, entanglements, whatever you want to call it, whatever jaded them call it, like, at the end of the day, we're all really trying to find something in someone else that is being ready to, 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 to be given to us by God. Like we're depending on so many other people for our happiness when really we're trying to have someone satisfy us in the way God has, you know? Not like when you taste the water and you want to go back to get something to drink, it's like you're, try, you're trying to find that in others, but, but God is just trying to say like, I am here. I am here. So hopefully, man, hopefully by the end of this Hopefully by the end of this weekend, uh, I'm able to be a servant and I'm able to present God in a way. I don't even need to present him. What am I talking about? You're able to find God in a way that's never been the same before. But there's the problem with that, right? I've been there. I've sat where you're sitting today. I've stood where you're standing today. I've been surrounded by Uncle Lester, Uncle Ray's, Uncle Chris. I've been, I've been there. I've been to all of the conferences you can think of. I've been to all of the youth conferences, the youth retreats. And the problem that I found was I would get so wet for the Holy Spirit, but I would dry off too soon. Let that sink in. Like I would be excited. The weekend would come here and it would pass. And during that time frame, I would just be ready to preach the word of God, to go from door to door, to do whatever it took. But it actually only lasted so long. It only lasted so long, man. You know, many of you here, although you're young, you know, you, you might have a job already. Some of you here are my age, a little older. You know, it's supposed to be for the youth, but Uncle Lester probably here. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> you know, he been young at heart for years. He's been young and if he's not, he's probably going to watch this. You know, Uncle Ray, you're probably here too, and that's okay. You know, <laughs> your spirit, man, you guys, man, your heart, it's, 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 it's what helped raise me, you know. So I will forever be grateful. But with that said, we're all sitting here, and to some extent, we're adults. If you're not there yet, you're on your way. If I ask you what your goals are right now, some of you would say, well, I want to have a family. I want to have a nice job. You might even have an income attached to that of how much you want to make a year. But the common theme that will be throughout all of that is you want to have a job. You know, when I asked this question years ago, if you were there, you might remember. If not, it was, uh, you know, it was an afternoon, a Sabbath afternoon, and I'm going to ask it again. Because many of you here are, are even now older enough to think about it and, you know, let it marinate a little bit. But when you, got, when you have your job, when you have that spot that you are comfortable in, whether you want to 
wake up and go there every day, whether you're tired and you don't want to go there any day. Like, what is the one thing you look forward to every year? Every year. You know it's coming. Okay? Some of you are thinking, you don't need to say it out loud. If you have, that's fine. That's perfect. Right? So that one thing, you know it's coming. Sometimes you go for a couple of days, you know, you might take a little trip down to Miami. Sometimes you go for a week. Sometimes you go for a month, depending if you got that nice government job. If you're the Defense Force officer, you go whenever you want. That's <laughs> whenever you want. If you don't want to go to work, you don't go to work. <laughs> if you feel like sleeping, then you sleep in, right? <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, y'all. <laughs> it wasn't my plan to go that far. It just happened, right? But nonetheless, nonetheless, your goal is to go on vacation because at least then, you know, you have a little break, right? But, but why do you think your employers are okay with you going on vacation? Why? Right? Like you, like we said, you might take a week, right? You might just go from there to there, or you might take a day, but why are they okay? Why is it that whenever you sign that piece of paper that says, all right, sir, I would like, you know, these dates off, my birthday is coming up, I want this off, Christmas is coming up, I want this. Why is your employer okay? The answer is very simple, man. It's because they know that you're coming back. They know. They know you're coming back. You see, the enemy is actually okay with you being here right now because to him, you're really just on vacation. Mm. He's okay with you stepping foot in this building at this moment because at the end of the day, he knows you're coming back because what? You're just on vacation. And, and that's when I realized and I learned, yo, this is really the true reason why I dry off too soon. Because I'm always just on vacation. You're here today, my friends, my people. You're here this weekend. And if someone that you know is often at church with you, they might not be here today, please have them come out tomorrow. Please have them be here because this time we're not just going to be on vacation. This time we're going to dig deep and we're going to find a true reason, a true vine to hold on to. Not for the moment, but for a lifetime. As we get into the word tonight and as we speak about different situationships and different entanglements, uh, we're going to be speaking about Samson. And many of us know the story, Samson and Delilah and, you know, and how it all ended up and, you know, kind of the particulars of what happened and the ins and outs, but I'm going to look at it from a different point of view today, this weekend. Well, before we go any further, you know, they say it's good homiletics to, to pray before our sermons. So we should probably do that at this moment. I am in your hands, Lord. Amen. Gotta be short and sweet sometimes. You always be, you always be beating around the bush doing these little fancy prayers, and ain't nobody's have time for that. You know what I mean? But that's okay. <laughs> If you have your Bibles, if you have your phones, if you have whatever it is, your tablets, whatever you got, turn with me to Judges chapter 14. Judges chapter 14, and of course we're going to start at verse 1. 
Judges chapter 14, and we're going to start at verse what? Verse 1. So the background of Samson is actually quite interesting. Interesting as some of the stories where you hear about a woman who was barren and, you know, barren meaning she was not able to give birth or have, have a child. Uh, and as time passed and as she was faithful in God and as she was trusting to God, eventually things changed. Eventually he went in there and he did a little one too, you know, and he, he, he ensured that she then would be able to have child and be with child. And she was directed to name this child Samson. Chapter 14, verse 1 says, Now, Samson, he's a big, strong man now, right? I, I, I'll show you my arms, but that's not, that's not proper and right for where we are today. Samson was a strong man. Chapter 14, verse 1 says, Now Samson went down to Timnah and saw a woman in Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines. So he went up and told his father and mother, saying, I have seen a woman in Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, therefore, Get her for me as a wife. Boy, I wish it was that easy. Your boys say, Mommy, Daddy, that's who I want right there. Y'all go, y'all go get her for me. That's like that's like being out with your boys, right? I'm like saying, boy, but you tell a girl I want to talk that way. Huh? Her right there. But it don't ever work out always as planned, right? It don't always go so, 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 so he said to his mommy and daddy, y'all please, this is the woman right here who I want. Go and get her. But his father hmm, and mother, come on now, said to him, is there no woman among the daughters of your brethren or among all my people? That you must go and get a wife from the uncircumcised Philistines? Hmm. You see, Samson didn't quite get it. But it seemed as though his parents already had a whole list of what his wife needed to, to, to you know, the accolade she had to have or, you know, she had to have a degree or, you know, she needed to, you know, be a virgin or, you know, she needed to uh, 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 um, be going to church every Sabbath or maybe, maybe, maybe she need to, she need to make sure she have a solid job, even though she's going on vacation now and then. But we don't see that. We just needed to have a solid job. We needed to believe in God. We need her to not be given to strong, strong drink, to wine, or to, to, to any such substances. We need her, Samson, to be able to walk beside you and make you glow. And then, and then, the flip side of it, some of our parents are in here also with a long list, right, of this guy. He has to be a God-fearing man. Come on now. He, he has to not be a defense force officer. Have mercy. Defense force officers are great men, by the way. Great men. So you all need to stop that. You all need to really, really stop that. I don't like how you always be doing my boys, them man. You all relax. Relax. So, so you need to have a strong man, a man who could protect you. You need to have a man who is loving and caring. You need a man who is a provider. And with all that being said, whether you're male or whether you're female, there's always a list of some, that's, that you need someone to meet. There's always a list. It's always there, whether we want to admit it or not. 
And at the end of the day, to be honest, some situationships actually feel real. <laughs> some of them feel like, like, shoo. Some of y'all probably feel like y'all can get married right now. <laughs> Sorry. But some of y'all won't. Mm. I probably shouldn't say that. But that's okay. I just telling you all the truth. Right? Like, some of y'all just won't. And it's, we're all on a journey, you know. We're all on a journey to get to that place where God truly wants us to be. But a lot of the times our situationships feel real because we have created who we think God has for us. And we chase what we think God has for us. And so our situationships are sometimes coded with the, 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 the. Seemingly genuineness of a real relationship when really it's not. And if you're unsure still of what a situationship is, let me tell you. Oh, let me tell you. Let me tell you. A situationship is a relation type ship thing, E. Why? Where initially you start to pray. You know, this might be one of the little signs. I could be wrong, but it might be one of the little signs. You start to pray together. And you start to say, you know what, Lord? We will have you as the head and the center of this relationship. But as time progresses, you realize that the, the, the details of your relationship and the meeting places start to change. Maybe after this tonight, y'all got to go to the club. And if you are, I'm not judging y'all. I'm just letting you know. I'm just, yeah, just trying to help you out. Okay, so don't be mad at me. Next time, they probably ain't going to bring me here for the youth, to speak at the youth uh, conference. And, but that's okay. I just trying to let you all know. So you might start off praying strong, and you might have a little faulty up where you know you don't pray for a week together, or you don't do Bible studies no more together. But, but has God ever been inconsistent in your life? Let that one sink in. You might realize that in your relationship, the red flags start to pop up. What are your red flags, Lorenzo? What are you talking about, red flags, Lorenzo? I don't know what you're talking about, Lorenzo. Well, let's let Samson tell us. So you remember, Samson went ahead And Samson told his parents, he said, in verse 2 of chapter 14, I have seen a woman in Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, therefore, get her for me as a wife. And even after his parents had gave him the little, the rundown, no, oh, that one don't look good, Samson. That one ain't the right one, Samson. He says to them in verse 2, Three, at the end of it, he said, And Samson said to his father, Get her for me, for she pleases me well. And you know, you know, guys, that's how they sketch us first. You know, they sketch us by the sight of the eye. That lust of the eyes is what has set us up for failure. Because she's looked good, she's dressed good, but then you expect to go home and have something that can cook for you and she can't cook. I'm not saying that that's a red flag. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying, right? Like, we see things with our eyes and we want it. Samson didn't have the, 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 the time to consider whether or not she was a woman of God. He didn't have a time to, to maybe consider is there someone else that she's already in a relationship with? with instead he says to his father man she look good i need that so they just did as he asked but as they were doing what he asked samson being the strong man that he is 
he continued on what his, his, his plan was set for because he needed her, his wife, first wife, he needed her to see that he was a strong man. <laughs> so so what I, what my boy do? Samson, let's go, let's go. Verse chapter five, verse five, chapter 14. It says, so Samson went down to Timnah with his father and mother and came to the vineyards of Timnah. Now to his surprise, a young lion came roaring against him. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him and he tore the lion apart as one who would have torn apart a young goat. But he didn't have nothing in his hand. And interestingly, Samson decided not to tell his father or his mother of what had occurred. Then he went down, verse 7, and talked with the woman, and she pleased Samson well. So from there on, Samson already getting swing. After some time, when he returned to get her, he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. And behold, a swarm of bees and honey were in the carcass of the lion. Remember the same lion he just slayed? It says here in verse chapter 9, verse 9, why am I saying verse chapter 9? In verse 9, he took some of it in his hands and went along eating. When he came to his father and mother, he gave some to them and they also ate. Now the story continues and it says that Samson decided now to, to use this as a, as a tactic, as a means to show off not just his strength, but also his wisdom. To see how smart can I actually be? Will they figure out my riddle? He used that whole situation of the lion. He used that whole timeline to, to, to construe what is coming next? So in verse 10 it says, So his father went down to the woman, and Samson gave a feast there for young men used to do so. And it happened when they saw him that they brought 30 companions to be with him. Then Samson said to them, let me pose a riddle to you. If you can correctly solve and explain it to me within the seven days of the feast, then I will give you 30 linen garments and 30 changes of clothing. But if you cannot explain it to me, then you shall give me 30 linen garments and 30 changes of clothing. So your boy thought he was straight, right? Here is a riddle. Here is a situation that he didn't even tell his father and his mother about. And when we're in these relationships, situationships, entanglements, there's always going to be a test, a true test, as to exactly how how much someone will actually be there for you? How real are they with you? So the fellas that Samson was talking to and said, you know what, if you guys get around, you got to give me all that stuff. You got to give me the garments. You got to give me everything I ask for. You guys have to give it to me. They thought to themselves, nah, we can't lose this one. So they went to the woman. The same woman who Samson says, pleaseth me well. The same woman who his parents had said to him, listen, but that ain't the one. That ain't the one. I can't explain it to you, Samson. And some of your parents in the other day trying to, they scratching their head and they trying to say, Lorenzo, I trying to tell them that right now. But at the end of the day, they, they already tell you it ain't the one. But we don't always listen, right? 
It's like God putting us on a path for us to go left, but we really, 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 really just want to go right. And so they tested her. And they, I don't even know if it was a real test though. Let's let's read it. Let's read it. I don't want I don't want to come to conclusions. I drop the conclusions. I want to see what they said to her. It said, but it came to pass on the seventh day, in verse fifteen, that they said to Samson's wife, "Entice your husband, that he may explain the riddle to us, or else we will burn you mm, and your father's house with fire." Have you invited us in order to take what is ours? Is that not so? Says, then Samson's wife wept on him and said, you only hate me. You do not love me. You have posed a riddle to the sons of my people, but you have not explained it to me. What did one girl say? You only hate me. You do not love me. You know, guys, sometimes these situationships, there may be a time that comes where you realize you, you need to end that. It may come a point in time where you realize that there are some people that just won't die for you. And there will come a point in time where as you're trying to put an end to this situationship, the other individual may try to mm, may try to entice you. They may try to find other ways to persuade you. They may try to make you feel as if you are nothing without them. Have mercy. In fact, there are some people that may even go to the extent of threatening the safety of their own life to keep you hostage. To keep you bound. And the sad thing is, we never really recognize those red flags. We, we become lost. <laughs> we become lost and like they say, you know, love is what? Love is blind, eh? But nonetheless, we ignore those red flags for what purpose? Because we feel as though we're in love. Because we feel as though we are with the person that God has desired us to be with. You feel as though you've 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 had birth or you've given you've given this 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 man a child, so you must wed him or her. You've been put in predicaments and circumstances time and time again but you still cannot see you see this woman wasn't strong enough to be faithful to Samson she wasn't strong enough to huh, hold fast huh, till he comes she wasn't and sure enough not being able to recognize this red flag, Samson went ahead and Samson said, okay, baby girl, come on. Come on, I'll tell you. I'll tell you exactly how it is. You know, I'll tell you exactly what the, the, the riddle means and the answer to this riddle. And as she did that, the Bible tells us that they answered it exactly as Samson told her. Exactly as Samson told his wife, they answered it. They answered the riddle. His response is what blew me away. He says, 
if you had not plowed with my heifer, you would not have solved my riddle. And the anger in him followed. The spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily and he went down to Ashkelon and killed 30 of their men, took their apparel and gave the changes of clothing to those who had explained the riddle. And the last part that still gets me even as I read it now, it says in verse 20 of chapter 14, and Samson's wife was given to his companion who had been his best man. Samson's wife was given to his companion who had been his best man. You know, I was witness to it all. <laughs> this person getting taken by this person's best man or best friend or and the sad part is, you guys still don't see it. You still don't see the red flags. You are in relationships or situationships. In fact, you cannot see it because you're still sleeping. Like, it's like you're sleepwalking in daylight. You're in this relationship or situationship and you guys have been spiritually dead. You've been dead. Some of us, some of us have been dead for a week because we've only been together for a week. Some of us have been dead for months because we've been only together for months. Some of us have been together or dead for years now. You see, but <laughs> Lazarus was only dead for three days. Lazarus was dead for three days. Yet the Almighty Jesus came through and he said, Okay. Okay. Three days? Let me take my time. Three days? Oh, that's not too long. Three days. He went to Lazarus and he said, Wake up. And this guy was, was, was physically dead. He wasn't just spiritually dead. He wasn't just in a situation or a relationship that was pulling him away from God. He wasn't just finding himself in a predicament where, where sex now became the, 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 the end all and be all of his relationship. He didn't find himself in a position where he had to, 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 to trust in someone else more than he trusted in God. Lazarus was dead. And God is saying to you today, wake up. Wake up. Your body count does not matter. Wake up. You are here tonight and you're worrying about what comes next. Wake up. Sex has become the centerpiece of your relationship. Wake up. This this, this still small voice, this, this is your conscience speaking. How can you sleep when Jesus is calling? So boy, I can't. Oh, no. hey. Yeah, bro, what's going on? Um, Anything good? I'm gonna check it in. Come on, just put it something. Just gonna try and run the business, my guy. Hi, baby. What's going on? Oh, what you doing? What you doing? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What's going on? I'm trying to hug you. Yeah, no, I, I need no hugs. It's quite good, man. Okay. Yeah. So, you trying to hug me? You didn't think last night was special? It's all right. Just all right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's not too bad. I lost my virginity to you. Yeah, 